I'm Brett Taylor, Director of Worship Arts at West End Community Church in Nashville, Tennessee. At West End, we believe that worship is formative, and that's the power of music as well. It not only engages our emotions, but our whole selves, shaping our minds and wills to better understand and more fall in love with the gospel of Jesus Christ. We wanted to offer a limited four-part series on the history, stories, and beauty of the songs we sing at Christmas. Why do we love them? It sparks a comfort and a joy in our hearts, uniquely unlike any other time of the year. So whether you're a Sunday church attender or you've just snuck into a church once and sat in the back row just to listen, let's take a look at some classic Christmas and Advent hymns and unpack the beauty together. Far as the curse is found, far as the curse is found, far as, far as the curse is found. Our guest today is my dear friend, Sandra McCracken, artist, songwriter, and hymn writer. I'm so excited about the song that she's chosen um, to talk about and play today. It's a great Isaac Watts old hymn, Joy to the World. So many of us are familiar with it. But there's more than what we sing, right? There's the story behind it, what what story it tells and what story uh, is about it that we can learn to help us sing it with more full hearts um, when we sing it in our churches and during the year. And so, um, Sandra, why this song? Why Joy to the World? Man, um, well, I just love Advent, and I think Advent is um, is this time of year leading up to Christmas where we sing these songs about longing, and that's really just where I love to live as a songwriter, I think, anyway. <laughs> so especially, it's like we have permission to do this just leading up to Christmas, and it's a way that affirms who we are and what we're really experiencing in our lives. Um, but I also love to sing this song in June. So I think it's both an Advent song and it's a song that just um, theologically could also point to the second coming of Jesus, which I think was what he first, Isaac Watts, who wrote this song, I think that's what he first meant to write when he when he sat down to write this. Yeah, it is traditionally a Christmas song um, sung in those couple weeks right before uh, the 25th. And it's so interesting and, and kind of exciting to think that like, wow, this song has such great use and such great beauty um, in the in the, the all the months of the year because of what it's pointing to, what story it's telling, which is yeah. which is the first and second coming, the already, the not yet. Um, Jesus has come; He will come again, and we sit in the tension and the waiting of that. And uh, this song really lends itself to that mm. in a beautiful way. I I, I want to talk about Isaac Watts, really interesting character. He's the hymn writer of this song, and um, the song was written in 1719, which means you know right after the Renaissance had, had uh, was kind of wrapping up, and uh, obviously before America was even a country, before America was born. So this is an old, old song. A lot, a lot of people might, might not know that, but it, is, it was written such a long time ago. Um, Isaac Watts is, is an incredible, one of our, our most prolific hymn writers. He's written hymns such as When I Survey the Wondrous Cross, um, Our God and Help in Ages Past, Alas and Did My Savior Bleed. Um, I boast no more. Very prolific songwriter, um, and I love uh, the part, part of his life. One thing that marked his life that was so interesting was his friendship with William Cooper, another great hymn writer of ours. Yeah. Um, and they're, and they're, and like I think their friendship really tells the story of how where this kind of hymn came to be. Yeah, it's fun to think about as as far back as these songs go. Um, that we can look back and realize people have gone before us in their doubt and their struggle and their faith and their proclamation of God's goodness. And William Cooper, from what I've learned, he really struggled with doubt and depression and through all, all up until the very end of his life, like really w wrestled with whether or not he was saved and didn't know and just had a hard time. And while that continued, their friendship continued to produce these hymns that we now still sing. And I think just the story of that is comforting to me because knowing that we also experience doubt and we also have a lot of unfinished, um, like unanswered questions in our lives. And for now, we may not have those answers, but we have these hymns we keep singing that kind of remind us of what's true, even when we don't feel like it. Yeah. And th those unanswered questions, um, that those those markings in a, uh, in our hearts and in our world of brokenness and longing yeah. and confusion, um, we we uh, like this this hymn, this hymn beautifully defines that as the curse. It says mm -hmm. uh, there's a line that says, "Far as the curse is found, he comes to make his blessings flow." Far as the curse is found, and uh, it's really interesting about that. This hymn does such a great job of 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 really talking about the realness of that hurt and that pain. And uh, Isaac wrote this hymn. 
uh, from essentially from a few scriptures from the Bible, from Psalm 96, Psalm 98, and Genesis. And far as the curse is found was actually the only line that didn't come straight from scripture for Isaac. And uh, because of that reason, uh, a lot of old hymnals removed that line, far as the curse is found from their hymnals, because it wasn't from scripture. And I just think it shows the beauty of the hymn writer to, um, to, literally make a poetic a poetic artistic expression of yeah. what the bible's saying but just saying it in a different way not from scripture but from from his from the beauty of his own heart yeah and um i just love that line that's it's such my favorite a good point and i think you know you and i both do songwriting work both within the church and outside of the church and i think it's such an affirmation to say that god gives us his word and that his word is made alive and it's renewed as it goes out so whatever your vocation is for us it's like music stuff and songwriting, but like no matter what your vocation, that poetic line, your life is demonstrating that poetic line somewhere, whether that's at home or um, as a teacher or as an engineer or as a, I mean, no matter what your vocation is. So I think it's like, take the scripture, take it out and let it produce new poetry. And I, I love that. I've never even thought about that in this hymn. So yeah. it's fun to learn that today. And and, and scripture is inspiration for the artist is is a great place to start. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, you talk about pro proclamation of joy, whether the joy in this song, um, you know, it, it's, I love the way he talks about it. When he says, far as the curse is found, it goes into the curse and it wraps its arms around mm -hmm. the curse. And I think that joy in the midst of suffering, joy in the, in the middle of pain yeah. versus it doesn't disregard or it doesn't dismiss or make uh, make very little of your pain. It actually acknowledges it, but then it but then it goes right into the middle. And yeah. I think that's what this song does. Yeah, it really does. And I'm glad. I mean, it makes me want to sing it, and it makes me want to keep singing it because I think there are a lot of places where those questions are unanswered for me. That um, that we need those songs to bring us back to what's true, and that the joy. I mean, I think that's joy is almost its own protest, and it comes right alongside the sorrow. It's like I think of it as um, like if you have a river, there's like an undercurrent and joy is the undercurrent. So no matter what's happening on the surface of the water, that current is, is it will reach its destination, is moving toward the sea and it um, has been set in motion and you can't do anything about it. And I think that's what, what biblical Christian joy is. And that's what sets it apart from happiness or just good cheer. And, you know, Christmas can be those things mm -hmm. on, you know, and we, we need that. Those are gifts too. But that joy is, um, it's irrefutable in a sense. It is what we are marked by in Jesus. Unstoppable, yeah. um, irrefutable joy. That's, that's really cool. Um, good, good news. I'm ready to sing the song. I, what, what if what if we pretended that it's July 4th in the middle of summer and we have fireworks going off and, and popsicles right. and uh, and uh, let's let's sing this song um, and make it a tradition of ours to sing it all year long because it's that beautiful of a song. Mm -hmm. Joy to the world. Okay. Two, three. sing and heaven and nature sing and heaven heaven and nature sing joy to the earth the savior reigns let all their songs employ while fields and floods rocks and sounding joy repeat the sounding joy repeat repeat the sounding joy no more let sins and sorrows grow nor thorns infest the ground he comes to make his blessings flow far as the curse is found, far as the curse is found, far as, far as the curse is found. He rules the world with truth and grace and makes the nations prove. The glories of His righteousness And wonders of His love And wonders of His love And wonders, 
wonders of his love and wonders of his love and wonders of his love and wonders wonders of his love